Hey guys, it's Kat, and as you can tell by my blue eyes and my blue outfit, we're gonna do a makeup of Wendy Angela Darling from the Disney movie Peter Pan. I hope many of you have seen this Disney movie classic about Peter Pan losing his shadow, taking children from their homes to Neverland where he has his friends, the Lost Boys. There has been a movie in the 1950s about this, in the 2000s, and an amazing TV show called Once Upon a Time. But this is gonna be a two-parter makeup today where we do Wendy Darling from the 1950s movie who plays the girl in this movie who talks about the Peter Pan tales to her little brothers. And then we are gonna have a creepy twist just like in the movie where they suggested that the mermaids would drown Wendy. So we're gonna do a very creepy drowned makeup look. Warning, this video gets super duper graphic of makeup effects of showing a human being dead and drowned. So I'm warning you now, younger audiences should probably not watch this video, especially if you've dealt with drowning in real life, but I'm telling you now. So let's get started with the video of Wendy transforming into her and then a creepy side. First, I'm gonna put a wig cap on because I do not have Wendy's gorgeous honey brown colored hair. Of her sweet curls and her low ponytail in the movie, I am just gonna use some makeup primer, anyone will do. And then I'm gonna flatten my eyebrows down with some Elmer's glue stick and translucent powder because we want a flat surface to draw on eyebrows. Unfortunately, Wendy's eyebrows are so small, so thin, a lot thinner than mine, so we're gonna draw them on. But first, after we flatten our eyebrows down, this is totally optional, but I'm using some orange corrector around my blue under eyes, making sure that's all blended into the skin before getting some green corrector around the redness of my face. Blending that out, doing one more layer of glue stick and translucent powder to flatten them eyebrows. You want to do three to four layers of glue stick depending on how thick your eyebrow hairs are and how flat you want them. Getting some of that orange corrector again but doing it over our flat dried eyebrows this time to conceal the darkness of our eyebrows before getting some liquid foundation. The foundation I am using today is the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous 3-in-1 foundation, which is one of my favorites, but any foundation that you like will work. You want to tap that with a damp beauty sponge around your entire face, and don't forget to get your neck and some parts of your ears. And now it's time to get our concealer. And dot that on areas you want to conceal around your face and on your under eyes. But I'm just blending that concealer out and putting some translucent powder on the areas where I put concealer just to set it so it won't crease. Then getting more concealer between my eyebrows and on top of my eyebrow covers and a little bit on my chin, blending all of that out with my Beauty Blender sponge and then getting some eyebrow color. I'm getting some brown cream paint with the angled paintbrush and painting on my brows. Like I said, Wendy's eyebrows are very thin and you want to make them a light to medium brown to match your hair color of your wig later. Make sure both of your eyebrows are semi-even and we're gonna put some translucent powder on the bottom of it. Then getting some contour powder. I'm just gonna contour the sides of my cheeks and the bottom of my chin and don't forget that forehead to make Wendy's face look a little bit more animated. I'm also gonna contour the sockets of my eyes to make them look a little bigger and the bridge of my nose. I even wanna contour the tip of my nose just to make it look a little bit upturned and like a button nose. Then I'm just dipping into my Morphe N35 Neutrals eyeshadow palette. This color is like a terracotta eyeshadow color that I use on almost all of my Disney princesses. It's just very natural and beautiful, especially for my skin tone. Now I'm getting my all-time favorite Ofra highlighter in Beverly Hills. Getting the yellow tone highlight from that and highlighting certain parts of my face, especially my nose, my cupid's bow, my forehead, chin, and cheekbones. This is just gonna give us a beautiful glow of like pixie dust sprinkled on our face. And now we're gonna curl our eyelashes. Before, we're gonna get some mascara just to darken our eyelashes, especially our bottom lashes because I'm gonna use some false lashes later. Getting a medium brown matte eyeshadow from my Morphe N35 Neutrals palette with a small blending brush and blending some shadow into my lower lash line. Now it's time for those false eyelashes. These are by Red Cherry, they're the number 43 eyelashes and they're one of my all time favorite styles of false eyelashes. And as you can see, I'm going to conceal my bottom lip with some concealer and powder all of that down. 
before getting our neutral tone lipstick. This lipstick is by Tarte and I forgot the color name, but I'm definitely gonna put it down in the description box below along with the products from this video, but you want a pink tone lipstick that may have a little hint of berry, but looks semi-natural. And once your lips are done, it is time to get our wig. We are getting this medium tone brown wig. It has some hints of like a honey color in it. And I'm putting that on my head and making sure I have that naturally curly low ponytail in it. And with that, we are completely done with our Wendy Angela Darling's makeup transformation from Disney's movie, Peter Pan. She is such a cute character and I absolutely love how Wendy tells stories to her little brothers to keep their imaginations alive about Peter Pan. But stay tuned if you want to see a creepy side of her where she ends up being drowned by mermaids. Again, a warning, this is about to get very graphic because poor Wendy is about to be drowned. Starting off with my Bid Nye Death Wheel Cream Paint, getting the yellow tone of it and painting it on our brow bone and blending that out a little bit. We are also gonna put that yellow cream paint on our bottom lash line, like right below that where our bottom socket of our eye is. And we're gonna get some gray cream paint from the same wheel of colors. It's like this concrete color and we're putting that around the socket of our eye and some brown as well. This brown is a perfect muddy color between like dried blood and dirt. That's why I absolutely love that this color is in this Bid Nye Death Wheel and we're just trying to make it look like our eye has some bruising and it's losing the blood from its skin. So as you can see, I am also getting my beauty sponge with the gray tone cream paint from that wheel of colors and patting that all over my face. What we wanna do here, we wanna make it look like the blood in life has been drained from the body and that no oxygen has been going to the person's brain while they've been drowning. I know this sounds very graphic and rough, but you need to make sure you get a certain effect right if you're doing this for any type of set or photograph, if you're doing this professionally as a makeup effects artist. Sadly, I do study pictures of real life injuries to make sure I could do the effect with makeup. I want it to look as realistic as possible. So I'm getting some alcohol paints. If you do not have alcohol paints because they are pretty pricey and they only activate with 99% alcohol which stings the skin. But I'm getting this dirty brown color with some blue in it that will look like veins across the cheek and I'm making dirt marks with it on the bottom of my chin and the corners of my lips. You are also gonna do this on the bridge of your nose. You wanna make sure that it looks like our skin is shrinking in certain areas like around the nose and high points like our chin because the skin is being affected by the water and the skin is waterlogged. So it's gonna be very discolored in a lot of parts of her face and body if she's been in a drowning accident. So as you can see, I'm just doing this alcohol paint in certain areas across my face and forehead. And you wanna dip into a orange stipple sponge with the same color to stipple on areas around our face so the skin looks like it is being affected by the environments of water and maybe even like the lagoon of Neverland. Like she's been underwater for a while. The mermaids dragged her deep down into the waters. So we are getting some eyeshadows in similar colors of the alcohol paints and coloring in around our eye sockets. With my fluffy eyeshadow brush, I also got my matte gray eyeshadow from my Morphe N35 Neutrals palette. And we're gonna use that a lot in this makeup because it's gonna give our skin that dead bluish gray tone of waterlogged skin. I also got some of the brown and gray cream paints from my Bid Nye Death Wheel, mix that together and put that on my lips to make it look like my lips are no longer pink because there's no blood flow to it. And I got some black cream paint and put that on the inner part of my lip. I'm also getting similar colors around my nose and then blending it out with orange stipple sponge. Getting more of these cream paints with a brush and just stippling it on areas around the bottoms of my cheeks and the sockets of my eyes and blending it out with the orange stipple sponge. I'm doing texture marks of dots and patches of darker skin in certain areas because when humans haven't had oxygen to their brains in a while, their skin starts to have different patchiness of blues and grays. Again, I know this sounds really creepy, but 
I am just getting an orange stipple sponge with the gray cream paints and stippling that all over my neck and chest, making sure it matches our face. We don't just want our face to be a grayish blue tone of this effect of makeup. We want any part that isn't our costume shown as that as well. Because unfortunately, when a human dies, it's not just their face turns blue, it's their whole entire body that's submerged in the water. Getting some more alcohol paint in that dark brownish blue color again and painting on some veins around our chest area. And you even put some around your neck. And once that is dry, we're gonna get some matte black eyeshadow and shadow in areas around those vein marks. Veins get really dark if the body has been sitting and decomposing for a very long while, so that's what we are trying to achieve here. Like her body has been at the bottom, of the lagoon for a while. Getting a stipple brush with some cream paints and just stippling certain areas on our chest, getting more vein marks and a brown tone of that cream paint again. You do patches of certain dark brown blue tones and blue gray tones on the body and I'm definitely doing areas around my face to frame it with some dark blue gray tones. And now I'm getting some liquid pain and sorrow. This is like fake tears on my eyelids to make some drippy wetness of like real liquid settling on the face like if she was pulled from the water. Now I'm getting some Dermaflage. This is a company that makes this silicone vein marks. They're like fake veins that are pumped through this plastic device and you can make different effects with it. And these colors they have in one of their kits is actually called vein. So I'm putting that over the areas where we painted on the veins just to make it more 3D and realistic. Getting more of that dark brownish red color and putting it around my eyes and around my nose as well. Getting more matte black eyeshadow around the vein marks and on certain parts of my face, especially my mouth. The mouth is really shown and affected by death and water accidents. All this darkness around my mouth is hopefully gonna make my lips look less plump and alive. Getting some of that matte black eyeshadow on the sides of my cheeks, putting more alcohol paint and vein color on that side vein on my cheek, getting more of that matte gray eyeshadow and putting it around my neck in certain areas where I feel like my natural skin tone is peeking through, more black, bluish gray around my eyes as well. And once you think your makeup makes you look blue enough in the face, we are completely done with this Wendy Angela Darling makeup transformation of her being drowned by mermaids from the Disney movie Peter Pan. I hope you guys enjoyed this intense makeup transformation of Wendy Darling being drowned by mermaids. I know that it is very graphic, but it gave me great practice in injury makeups and I really wanted to practice my skill in that. I love TV shows like Dexter and CSI. So I hope other people who enjoy those types of shows as well enjoy this makeup, especially if people who do serious makeup effects. Once I saw the real Peter Pan movie and I heard the mermaids threatening to drown her, this idea just clicked in my head and I really wanted to do it. But now it is time to transform back into myself and come out of the water. Thank you guys so much for watching this again and hanging out with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you enjoy intense makeup effects. If any of you guys do this beauty makeup portion in the video of Wendy Angela Darling or any makeups from my YouTube channel, please post on Instagram and tag me hashtag catsketch. Also, I will be attending VidCon this year, so if any of you guys are going, please come up and hug me. I would love to see you all in person. I'm so excited to meet some of you all. I know this video was super creepy, but there will be more makeup effects in the future that are less creepy and more beauty makeups and chatting videos. So you can subscribe to this YouTube channel to see more of that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Love you all. Bye.